Hello Aquarius and welcome to Intuitive Art Mediums. Thank you for joining me for your Pluto Retrograde in Capricorn Astro Tarot reading. Now this reading is a general reading meant for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Venus, and or Rising. So we're looking at the Pluto Retrograde which begins on Friday, April 29th at 2.38 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so please adjust to your time zone on the planet. Now, this retrograde is going to continue until October 8th, 2022. However, on Thursday, April 28th, the day before the Pluto retrograde, there's a pause. And within that Pluto pause, we have Mercury in Taurus, trining Pluto in Capricorn. Now this trine occurs again on Wednesday, May 25th. Trines are favorable aspects. And with Mercury, this is about favorable communications. It's almost as if Mercury is giving you some information just before the Pluto begins its retrograde. And then on Sunday, May 1st, we have Beltane. And this is right after the new moon in Taurus solar eclipse, which is a partial solar eclipse. And here we have on Beltane, May 1st, Venus in Pisces sextiling this Pluto retrograde in Capricorn. And sextiles are another favorable aspect uh, because watery Pisces is compatible with earthy Capricorn. Now this has to do with manifesting from the heart. This can also be a change in heart. Uh, Venus is about love, the heart, and Capricorn is about the bones, the structure of things. And so that's why I'm saying this has something to do with manifesting that which we love, creating from a place of beauty and love. And this could have an impact on your home or your gardens or your community. And then on Monday, May 16th, we have the full moon in Scorpio. Now this is a lunar eclipse. And it's going to sextile this Pluto retrograde in Capricorn. Now keep in mind, Pluto is the ruling planet of Scorpio. So there are going to be secrets that are revealed. Mysteries are going to be illuminated. A lot of things are going to come to the surface. This is also a shift in the heart energy because the moon is about how we feel. This is clearing out all illusions and knowing your own deep heart. So you're clearing out all the projections and all the what ifs and should ofs and focusing on what it is that you can do at this time. The lunar eclipse is going to clear something up for you. And it will be in the emotional body. And it will have something to do deep with the psyche because Pluto rules the underworld, the unconscious, the occult, that which is hidden, mystery. So there are things that are going to be revealed with that Scorpio lunar eclipse. Okay, then on Thursday, May 19th, we have a Taurus sun trining this Pluto retrograde in Capricorn. Now the sun brings clarity and reason and logic. It enables us to see more, to perceive more, to bring in more information. And with Taurus, this is about how we show up in the world, how we make our money, how we uh, secure our resources to live in the world. And Capricorn is that structure, that bones, the foundation. So for me, I'm seeing that a path is being cleared because the sun is illuminating something. 
Some of you might be getting the green light to go on a project. Resources have come in. Now, for some of you, this could also be working from your home because Taurus is about your work, but it also is how you have your security and home is part of that security. As where Capricorn rules more of how governments run, the structure of laws and policies. And um, with this energy, something is being permanently shifted. Now, many people have learned to work out of their home. And perhaps now is the time to use that Venus energy that's sextiling this Pluto energy and creating a new space in your home that is beautiful. This And again, this could be your gardens. This could also be your office. This could also be your sanctuary where you go to meditate. Okay, let's get into your reading Aquarius. We're first going to check out the Masola Oracle of Souls, the Mausolea, excuse me for mispronouncing that. I really feel that this deck speaks to that Pluto underworld energy, that which is in the shadow, that which is hidden, and that which is going to be revealed during this time. Okay, and for you, Aquarius, we have Anubius, the arbitrator of truth. So preservation, neutrality, and obligation. Okay, this is speaking to uh, doing what you feel is right. What is your truth? Here we have the blue flame, the throat chakra. Are you speaking your truth, your passion? Are you preserving that which you came here to do with your soul contract? So let me read the short paragraph from the book for deeper meaning for you. Okay, here we have Anubius, uh, while Osiris is the master of the Duat, no figure is more associated with its purpose than Anubius. He is the arbitrator of the trials, the final judge, and the guardian of the sacred tombs. In the trials, he weighs the hearts of the dead against the feather known as truth which is also the feather of Mayat. Even-handedly pronouncing the judgment of the scales upon each petitioner, Anubius preserves that which must not be forgotten and serves as a reminder that when we are called upon to give judgment, it is a matter of truth rather than inclination. Neutrality and duty are called for rather than yielding to one's passions. So this is separating your emotions. You know, and here we have the tool that separates the wheat from the chaff. So this is a separation of that which is useful, that which is the truth, and that which is opinions. Okay, so let's get into that May 1st Beltane energy because that occurs with that solar eclipse, which is going to be quite powerful. And that's a Taurus solar eclipse. And we're going to check out the Seasons of the Witch, the Beltane Oracle since this has to do with the Beltane energies. For you, Aquarius, we have surrender number 41. There's nothing more blissful than the act of letting go, of setting yourself free of all that doesn't serve you. Okay. 
So clear away the destruction, the clutter, that which does not serve you. You have to remain neutral and surrender to the truth of the matter. And this could very well have something to do with the truth of yourself because Anubius is announcing judgment upon the soul. Have you fulfilled your soul contracts? Have you neglected any soul contracts? You know, the retrograde is about those RE words, review, reflect, and perhaps redo. It's also about rejuvenation and renewal and relaxing. And there is that revealing, the revealing of your true heart. And it's asking you to surrender that which becomes clear. Don't turn your back on what you're here to do, what you're meant to do. Don't turn your back on your own soul truth. So let's see how the universe is uh, supporting you and has your back. In any moment, I can surrender to the powerful presence of love through prayer, contemplation, and stillness. Again, a confirmation to this surrender. And I believe I spoke about uh, possibly creating a place that you work out of your home, working with that Beltane energy, because this is the Venus energy that is the seeds of your intentions, of your heart, of that which you love. And Pluto has just plowed up the field of Capricorn, waiting to receive those seeds of intentions and just surrender to that powerful presence of love, which is Venus. What are your intentions? Perhaps you need to contemplate on that in stillness and meditation. Now let's get into the tarot reading for you, Aquarius. Uh, because Pluto rules the underworld, the occult, that which is hidden, I thought we would first uh, check out the occult tarot, and then we'll get into the angel tarots, as many of us are receiving new guides as we elevate to the higher frequencies. But with the occult tarot, we're looking at that which is hidden. What is being revealed for you? And here we have the Four of Swords. Teaches grammar, logic, and rhetoric can make one appear like a soldier. So this can give you the presence of a military type person, that's that neutrality. You know, a soldier is straight faced, does not show emotional expression. And with the Four of Swords, this is also a time to retreat and surrender to your rest and rejuvenation and recovery. This is a time for you to create this place of stillness for contemplation. Next, we have the Eight of Swords. Okay, this kills by drowning and can sink ships, controls the seas and the winds, will spare any life by request. Okay, the Eight of Swords is about being bound by your own doubts and fears. Uh, Something of that is going to be revealed to you, and it might be uncomfortable and difficult for you to look at. And you might, it might be something that you've been denying, and now you can no longer deny this Eight of Swords. What has kept you bound so stiff and blinded? 
Next, we have the Four of Wands. Okay, knows all things hidden. Answers truly about things earthly or divine. And in some ways, I feel like that is Anubius. He knows all things that are hidden. He's there in the underworld, but he passes judgment based on the judgment of the scales. And he answers truly about all things, earthly and divine. And here we have the Four of Swords with the Four of Wands. The Four of Wands is that happy harvest home where everyone feels comfortable to be who they are. There is this presence of love and contemplation and stillness. This is a place of meditation. Perhaps you gather with some friends and you do uh, meditation together. This could involve music and chanting, something that uh, you can do with like-minded others. Next, we have the Six of Pentacles. Teaches astrology and liberal sciences, again reveals hidden treasures and brings excellent familiars. Okay, the Six of Pentacles is about receiving and giving, receiving favorable karmic return. Anubius is letting you know that you have favorable karmic returns coming to you. And it could come in the form of the excellent familiars. This could be friends, family, people that you're familiar, people that you feel like you've known. Next, we have the Nine of Cups. This is a beautiful card. Uh, teaches logic, ethics, and the values of herbs and stones. Can make one invisible, helps one to be intelligent and long-lived, can recover lost items and find treasures. Again, some of that hidden occult knowledge, knowing where to find that which is lost. With the Nine of Cups, this is your emotional bliss. And working with the herbs and stones, you may also be studying here in your little space of contemplation and stillness, um, the use of herbal supplements to help balance your mind, body, and soul. Because as you balance your body, your mind, and heart and soul align with the balance of the physical body. So let's check in with the angel tarot. As many of us are receiving new guides because there is a shift. The souls are progressing. Anubius is here to say, you know, some of your soul guides are progressing, but there are going to be new guides coming your way the excellent familiars okay so let's see what your angel tarot guides have for you aquarius here we have the knight of wands serendipitous moments okay god the good in himself so protection prevents discovery of secret crimes saves exiles well, this is perfect for Anubius because in the Book of Dead, the Egyptian Book of Dead, there is a prayer in which the petitioner asks for his heart not to betray him of any of the crimes or temptations that he did in the lifetime. So if the spell is done correctly, your secret crimes remain hidden. You have this um, logic, the ethics, the value. So what you did, because sometimes we have to do things that might be a little bit shady for the higher good. And the Knight of Wands is being at the right place at the right time. Next we have the Ten of Cups. This is very nice because we have the Ten of Cups over here. So God, master of the universe, 
divine warrior confounds the wicked, brings victory and peace. Okay, so here you are in your bliss, your emotional bliss. You have victory uh, and your love. You're in the presence of this love. And love does confound the wicked because they, they don't understand it because they mistrust, they fear. Much like this Eight of Swords where they're bound by their doubts and fears and blinded to the opportunities that could be around them. Next we have the Queen of Swords, God, the hope of all the earth, ritual and cer ceremony can acquire all the treasures of heaven and earth. Okay, again, this at any moment I can surrender to the powerful presence of love through prayer, contemplation, and stillness. This is you planting your seeds of intentions with love. And through the ritual and ceremony, you can manifest anything that you wish to if you allow yourself to surrender and trust in the love of the universe. Next, we have the Nine of Wands, God, the impen Impenetrable Secret. Okay, Universal Medicine, Elevation of the Soul, and the Revelation of Mysteries. There's another one of those RE words with revelation. Now, with the Universal Medicine, I immediately thought of Reiki. Reiki is the universal life force, which is through love, because where love is, fear disappears. And then you can manifest what it is that you hope to manifest. Now, the Queen of Swords, she is a powerful woman of intellect. And she is able to separate the bullshit from the truth. So here we have, and that's part of this revelations of the mysteries. The Queen of Swords has great discernment. And she is also ruled by Aquarius, so that can be very powerful for you, Aquarius. So then that we have the Empress. Very nice. Godfather, the generous. Okay, fertility and fruitfulness assures peace between married couples. Okay, the Empress is a self-made woman. She's powerful. She's creative. She surrenders to her creativity and she does that which she loves. And when we do that, which we love, we fulfill our soul purpose. So let's check out the Making Magic cards and see what kind of magic is stirring up for you, Aquarius. And this card came flying out. Look at that, the Philosopher's Stone. Powerful manifestation of wishes and goals by harnessing universal energy. Okay, this is what I've been talking about. This is what your reading has been talking about, Aquarius. The harnessing of universal energy right here with the Empress. Universal energy of love. Okay, let's draw one more card for you. And we have air. Well, Aquarius, you're an air sign. I know many people confuse you with a water sign because you're the water bearer, but you are an air sign because it is like the rain, you pour the rain down upon the earth. Okay, so you work with the element of air to cut through to the core of a situation and see the truth. Right here, the Queen of Swords. 
which is ruled by Aquarius. Nobody can tell their lies to you. You see through people making excuses. And I think that right now you're kind of tired of everybody just making excuses. You need a break. You want to be in your own space so you can come back to who you are. Now let's see how this energy is going to shift your human frequency. Because this Pluto retrograde is pretty powerful. It lasts from April 29th until October 8th, the, uh, this autumn. So a lot of powerful revelations. And it's going to shift your energy and activate a frequency for you. Okay, number 13, coherence. The frequency of coherence supports our ability to harmonize the frequency of the heart with the frequency of the mind for the optimal ability to create the reality that we desire. Okay, Aquarius, that is what your reading has been revealing and talking about. You want to create your new reality and the only way you're going to do that is to look at the hard facts the truth of the matter and surrender and trust the love of the universe take that time to spend in contemplation this right here is much like this four of swords that's over here asking you to contemplate and in that contemplation you are able to have those powerful manifestations and you're able to plant those seeds during the Beltane energy when we have Venus in Pisces sextiling that Pluto retrograde the field has been plowed open it's opened it's ready and waiting to receive the seeds of your intentions that come from the heart. Okay, Aquarius, I hope you enjoyed this reading and I hope that it resonated and was beneficial for you. And until next time, take care.